to Moscow. Aboard are Expedition 19 and Soyuz Commander Gennady Bedalka and Expedition 19 Flight Engineer Mike Barrett, along with Charles Simonier, about to become the first such spaceflight participant to fly for a second time. This is uh, Simonia on the left, Padalka in the center, and Mike Barrett on the right in this photograph prior to launch. The Soyuz capsule was mated to its booster three days ago, and the Soyuz rocket, which stands 162 feet tall and weighs 680,000 pounds, was transported by rail car to the launch pad at dawn Tuesday. That pad is the same one used 48 years ago to support the launch of Yuri Gagarin, the first human in space, in April 1961. The Soyuz proper azimuth at launch is predetermined on rollout day when the Soyuz is rotated to the correct azimuth on the launch table on which it sits on the pad after it is raised to its vertical position from the rail car. Once launched, Badalka as Soyuz commander and Bar Barrett as the onboard Soyuz flight engineer will oversee several orbital correction burns using thrusters on the spacecraft to adjust its altitude relative to that of the International Space Station. After docking and hatch opening, the new crew will learn everything it can about the station from the current crew, Expedition 18 Commander Mike Fink, Flight Engineer Yuri Lanchikov, and Flight Engineer Koichi Wakata. Fink and Lanchikov have been aboard the space station since October, and Wakata joined them nine days ago while arriving aboard the space shuttle STS-119 mission, and he'll be remaining aboard with Padalka and Barrett until his schedule returned to Earth in late June. This is Wakata on the left, Fink in center, and Lanchikov on the right of this crew photo. The three will become members of the Expedition 20 crew while on orbit. Upon the arrival of Expedition 20 flight engineer Roman Romanenko of the Russian Federal Space Agency, Frank DeWinna of the European Space Agency, and Bob Thursk of the Canadian Space Agency. Wakata uh, will later be relieved by astronaut Tim Copra, who will fly to the station on shuttle mission STS-127 targeted to launch in mid-June. A spaceflight veteran leads the Soyuz crew to the International Space Station. This will be Russian cosmonaut Gennady Padalka's second trip to the station and his third trip aboard a Soyuz. From 1998 to 1999, he first served on the Russian space station Mir as an Expedition 26 crew member. He was a commander of that mission, logging 198 days in space. In 2002, Padalka made his first trip to the space station, serving as commander of Expedition 9 crew, which included the current ISS commander, Mike Fink, as its flight engineer. Padalka performed four spacewalks during Expedition 9, and while on board the station, logged an additional 187 days in space. He'll become the first two-time commander of the space station. This will also be the first time that two previous long-duration space station crew members, Mike Fink of Expedition 9 and 18 and Gennady Padalka of Expedition 9 and the coming Expedition 19 will greet one another in space. NASA astronaut Mike Barrett will be making his first flight into space. Before becoming an astronaut, Barrett served as a NASA flight surgeon during the Shuttle Mir program and the early days of the International Space Station program. He was a flight surgeon for the first station commander, Bill Shepard, for Expedition 1 back in 2000. Worked many a shift in this control room. As mentioned, this is the second flight to the station for Charles Simone, the 60-year-old former executive and software developer for the Microsoft Corporation, flying under a commercial agreement with the Russian Federal Space Agency. Simonia first flew to the station in the spring of 2007 aboard Soyuz TMA-10 with the Expedition 15 crew, Commander Fyodor Yushchikin and Flight Engineer Oleg Kotov. Simonia spent 12 days aboard the space station where he used his experience as a licensed amateur radio operator to conduct multiple ham radio passes with schools around the world. Simonia landed April 21, 2007 with the Expedition 14 crew in their Soyuz on the steppes of Kazakhstan. Simonia will return to Earth, this time with Fink and Lanchikov, with landing plan for April 7 in Kazakhstan.
This mission launches under the call sign Altair, the brightest star in the constellation Aquila. The Soyuz mission patch was designed as part of an international children's competition held last year. The talisman over the commander's seat is a gnome that was carried aboard Soyuz TMA-10, Padalka's previous Soyuz flight. In the last couple of hours, some of the milestones have included activation of systems for health checks of the radio communications, thermal control, and motion control systems. Observing launch preparations at Baikonur is a NASA contingent that includes Public Affairs Officer Rob Navius, who's been at the launch site since Friday. He filed this report a short time ago. On a frigid day at the sprawling space complex in south-central Kazakhstan, everything is at the ready for the launch of the Soyuz TMA-14 spacecraft with Gennady Padalka, Mike Barrett, and Charles Simoni on board. Padalka is strapped into the center seat of the fully-fueled Soyuz, Barrett to his left, Simoni to his right. The trio arrived in Baikonur on March 11th for rest, relaxation, and review of their flight plan that will culminate soon in their liftoff for the two-day journey to the International Space Station. While in Baikonur, the crew conducted their traditional raising of the flags outside their cosmonaut hotel crew quarters that represent their nationalities, as well as a tour of the pad where the Soyuz is poised for launch. The crew also conducted a tour of the museum near the launch complex that bears the name of the former Soviet great designer Sergei Korolyov and signed books and other artifacts in the museum, again, all part of the pomp and circumstance surrounding a Soyuz launch. Now the crew sits atop their Soyuz rocket on the same pad from which Yuri Gagarin was launched almost 48 years ago to become the first human in space, the same pad where Korolyov bid Gagarin farewell for his ride into history. We're just north of the town known as Tiratom that served as a railway junction for the shipment of Russian ballistic missiles to this one secret launch and test center during the Cold War. Today, the launch of the next residence of the International Space Station is being viewed by officials from NASA, the Russian Federal Space Agency, and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, whose astronaut, Koichi Wakata, is now in his 12th day in space, awaiting the arrival of his new crewmates, Padalka and Barrett. NASA is represented here today by Bill Gerstenmeyer, the acting administrator for space operations out of NASA headquarters. After launch, the Soyuz spacecraft's climb to orbit will be monitored by a series of tracking stations in the Central Asian region, stretching from here in Baikonur all the way east of Vladivostok, Russia, located about 100 kilometers from the Chinese border. Once on orbit, the Soyuz will deploy its solar arrays and navigational antennas, and control of its two-day flight will be transferred to the Russian Mission Control Center outside Moscow. So with that, we watch the Soyuz from our viewing site about a mile away as the Soyuz awaits its launch command. From our remote location here at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, a half a world away, we send it back to you at Mission Control in Houston. And we're back here in Mission Control, uh, just 40 minutes to the Soyuz launch today. The crew uh, awakened just before 10.20 uh, p.m. yesterday, evening central time, or about eight and a half hours prior to the launch. Crew members then participated in final, traditional, and required pre-launch activities. Before departing the crew quarters, a long stand.